Welcome to Higher Impact, where we're inspiring your now and empowering your future. I'm your host, Teresa Harrison, and as we begin this show, we celebrate the lives and legacies of three great civil rights pioneers and men of faith. Dr. Martin Luther King once described Reverend C.T. Vivian as the greatest preacher to ever live. Reverend Vivian was the former advisor to Dr. King, as well as the former pastor of the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. On February 16, 1965, Reverend Vivian and other activists were on the steps of the Dallas County Courthouse in Selma, Alabama, trying to register black voters. As Reverend Vivian pleaded for equal rights, Sheriff Jim Clark punched him in the mouth, bruised and bloodied. Reverend Vivian did not retaliate, but stood back up and continued to champion the cause. Reverend Joseph Lowry, known as the Dean of the Civil Rights Movement, was the former pastor of Cascade United Methodist Church in Atlanta. He co-founded the Southern Christian Leadership Conference along with Dr. King and others, and served as its vice president, later its chairman of the board, and from 1977 to 1997, its president. Congressman John Lewis was known for his courage. He dedicated his life to protecting human rights, securing civil liberties, and building what he called America's beloved community. On Bloody Sunday, March 7, 1965, Lewis was among the leaders of a voting rights march from Selma, Alabama to the state capitol in Montgomery. As the protesters crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge, Alabama law enforcement met them on the other side. Clad in a trench coat and a backpack, Lewis stood as the state troopers advanced. The marchers were beaten with nightsticks and tear gassed until they retreated over the bridge. Lewis was hit so hard in the head he got a concussion and a fractured skull. We echo the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. No, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. We will never forget the trailblazing activism and sacrifices made by these great pioneers. Lowry was a friend and colleague of Dr. Martin Luther King and co-founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Decades later, Mr. Lowry gave the benediction at President Barack Obama's inauguration. Joseph Lowry was 98 years old. Everybody knew what he had done. He was John Lewis. We're marching today to dramatize to the world that hundreds and thousands of Negro citizens denied the right to vote. We made a decision to march in an orderly, peaceful, nonviolent fashion from Selma to Montgomery. You are ordered to disperse. This march will not continue. Forty years later, John Lewis continues to inspire us. Are you with me? Let me hear you. trying to help people get registered to vote or looking down on us. Books to Live by .com helps you publish your passion. If you've got a book in your head or heart, allow Books to Live by .com to help you get it out and into the hands of the masses. Join other writers who have become published authors with Books to Live by. Books to Live by .com offers publishing consultation as well as full ghostwriting services. Professional and priced right with ministry in mind. Remember, Ministry comes in different formats. Contact us today and allow us to help make your publishing dreams come true. Your Impact Network has gone mobile. Now we'll be there wherever you are, whenever you need us. Our brand new app allows you to stream our complete lineup of preaching, ministry, and music 24-7. All of your favorite programs in the palm of your hand and just a click away. Impact's app features our content schedule for quick and easy searching and a Bible reading plan so you never miss daily devotions. We also have a brand new video on demand section so you can enjoy what you want exactly when you want. Regardless of your circumstance, the Impact Network will provide the ministry programs desired. Our goal is to have a positive impact on you and the lives of others. We also have an easy to use support button, allowing you to donate quickly, partnering with us as we preach the gospel around the world. Your Impact Network is now available in the App Store on all mobile platforms. Download it today and tell your friends. In 2013, a new television show with a unique concept premiered. It was called Preachers of LA, and the stars of the show were nothing if not controversial. 
Fast forward seven years, and today, one of those stars, Bishop Clarence McClendon, is still preaching, of course, and has a lot to say about where we are as a church and where we must go in the future as Christians, both black and white. Welcome to Higher Impact. I am with one of the most dynamic preachers in the country, Bishop Clarence McClendon. It is such an honor to have you on the show. Well, God bless you, Teresa. It is good to see you again, and I'm glad <laughs> to see all that God is doing through you. God bless you. Thank you. So now I know that in the midst of the pandemic, there's been shut down, and your church, your ministry is still doing phenomenally well. Uh, to, to God be all the praise and the glory, we are doing extremely well. By every metric, uh, our reach has expanded. Our uh, income has expanded. Our global uh, outreach has expanded. We're doing more in the city and more globally. It, it's, it's extraordinary uh, what has happened in the last 18 weeks or so. But we give so God I, all the praise. You know, that's amazing because I'm hearing that same testimony from a number of faith leaders around the country. And I know that, you know, part of the tradition is to go to the building. Do you think that, and I know you're, you're in California where right. things are really, really bad and the, the COVID situation has really exploded. Um, do you think that because uh, the shutdown now has been so long and it has even been extended, people will, will come back to the physical building again? You know, I, Teresa, I do believe that people will come back to the physical building again. I, I, I think that there is a dynamic in the corporate expression of worship that cannot be duplicated in or through anything else. Of course, we know the admonition of the scripture, forsake not the assembling of yourself together as the man of some is. And, but the interesting thing is it says, especially as you see that day approaching. So I think the gathering of saints is always going to be a powerful thing. However, I said it long before the, 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 the shutdown happened that I, I, I felt the Spirit of God was bringing the church back to a sort of first century modality. I think our mega church mentality, and again, I've been a part of that in television and all that, and there will always be great churches and big churches, but I think our mega church mentality had begun to delude us into thinking that numbers meant impact. And that's really not what has transpired in the nation. Although our churches are growing, you know, I would say at times we had mega church with many impact on the culture. And so what I'm seeing is that, you know, when you think about it, what is happening now, people are having to pray in their homes. They're having to study the word of God in their homes. They're, they're, and so, you know, I think there's a public, and it's very interesting, Acts 20, 20. The 20th verse of the 20th chapter of Acts, Paul says, I withheld nothing that was profitable to you. I fed you not only publicly, but from house to house. And I think in 2020, God is saying to the church, not only publicly, but house to house. So I think there'll be a marriage of the two going forward. But I will say this too, that no longer will any pastor, preacher, or faith leader be able to, to, uh, to measure their impact by who's sitting in the seats. The church has always been much larger than the people in the four walls, and this is being demonstrated now. So, you know, a lot of guys will be thinking, well, they've lost their numbers. No, 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 no. Your numbers are still out there. There'll just be less people in the physical seat. I think we have to, you know, James Baldwin said, if you do not know what's behind you, it's very difficult to analyze what's around you. And I think what we're dealing with right now in the modern, is a modern incarnation of what transpired in the 60s with the civil rights movement. But in the 60s, we had a prophet at the, at the center of that movement. And while Dr. King was a civil rights leader, yes, and while his impact had civil, social, and political influence, I think sometimes we forget this was a prophet of God. And the wind behind the, the, the movement of the 60s was a prophetic wind. And I believe that's one of the reasons it had such impact. Right now, I, I see 
a, a, an in, a reincarnation, if you will, or a remanifestation of that spirit. But I believe the church now has to find its voice and has to find its voice in the national conversation. There's a lot of dialogue going on and it's all good. I thank God for, you know, what is happening. Uh, you know, Black Lives Matter now is, has been brought into the national conversation. But I think the church has got to find its voice in this conversation. And I think the beginning of it, you know, when you look at what happened, Teresa, with George Floyd, I think one of the things we forget that within, is that within a 24 hour period in the news cycle, there was another event that had occurred in New York. And that was with that woman, uh, Amy Cooper, I think her name was, and, yes. and, and the African-American man named Christian Cooper, which I always thought was very interesting. Both of their last names were Cooper. And yet they're on the, this, this ethnic divide. And, and within a 24 hour period, we saw that issue. And then we saw the George Floyd issue. And what happened, I believe, and people are wondering, what, when, I think what happened is, Black people and people of color actually had confirmed something that we had known and felt for years. And that was this, that a vast majority of Caucasian people in the United States of America are so uh, uh, rested in their privilege, so assured of their exoneration in the system, that even when they're being videotaped, because both of these things were being videotaped, Yes. But even when they're being videotaped, they are so assured of the systemic impunity that they will receive from the current society that they can disregard, in one case, the well-being of a Black life, in another case, the very life of a Black life, and, and fear no consequences. I think that set something off in this nation. Now we're dealing with a very, very significant truth. You know, Dr. Dr. King said this. He said, a social movement that only moves people is merely a revolt. But a social movement that moves people and institutions is a revolution. I think we are now in the throes of a revolution. I think so, every... Go ahead. Go ahead. So you see that there's a governmental change, a policy change, political change, that is afoot after this whole thing that, and, and what is that? Well, see, I, 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 don't, I don't see it yet. <laughs> now, and, and I think, you know, one of the things we have to be cautious of is the fact that, you know, uh, people saying, you know, Caucasian people saying Black Lives Matter and people changing this is some sort of metric of actual internal heart change and mind transformation. That's not happening. And, and one of the things I see, you know, I saw the protests and, and again, I, I thank God for every white brother and or sister or any other ethnicity. But what the spirit of God say, said to me is, it, the issue now is not whether black lives matter to you because dogs lives matter and whales lives matter, especially to Caucasian people. The question is not whether my black life matters to you. The question is, is my black life equal to you, to you? Okay. And see, until there's an issue of equality, I actually think, and please don't get me wrong, I am not minimizing, diminishing, or in any way uh, negating the influence of what Black Lives Matter has done to cause the national conversation and consciousness to come to bear with this. But I think we're past the point, whether it matters to me, whether my black life matters to you, <laughs> because until my black life is equal to you, you'll still keep your, your knee on my neck until we're equal. And I think this is where the church has to begin to speak its voice. One of the things that I've been saying is that race, our 20th and 21st century understanding of race is a historical lie. <laughs> it, 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 it really is, Teresa, a historical lie. Um, from a biblical worldview, uh, there is no mention of race in scripture that has anything to do with the distinctions between people. It's only mentioned once in relation to people, and, and that has nothing to do with color. Right? The scripture teaches that we are all one race. We are one blood. The race is human, yes. and within that race, there are different ethnicities. 
Now, why do we have this issue of race? And see, here's what I'm saying. Until we deal with this, and the church must lift its voice to deal with this. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more from Bishop Clarence McClendon. Books to Live by .com helps you publish your passion. If you've got a book in your head or heart, allow Books to Live by .com to help you get it out and into the hands of the masses. Join other writers who have become published authors with Books to Live by. Books to Live by .com offers publishing consultation as well as full ghostwriting services, professional and priced right with ministry in mind. Remember, ministry comes in different formats. Contact us today and allow us to help make your publishing dreams come true. Your Impact Network has gone mobile. Now we'll be there wherever you are, whenever you need us. Our brand new app allows you to stream our complete lineup of preaching, ministry, and music 24-7. All of your favorite programs in the palm of your hand and just a click away. Impact's app features our content schedule for quick and easy searching and a Bible reading plan so you never miss daily devotions. We also have a brand new video on demand section so you can enjoy what you want exactly when you want regardless of your circumstance the impact network will provide the ministry programs desired our goal is to have a positive impact on you and the lives of others we also have an easy to use support button allowing you to donate quickly partnering with us as we preach the gospel around the world your impact network is now available in the app store on all mobile platforms download it today and tell your friends the Impact Network wants to connect with you, and the easiest way is through our new mobile-friendly website. Simply go to www.watchimpact.com, and a world of information and inspiration will be at your fingertips. Live streaming is always available on your desktop, plus take us with you anywhere. You'll be able to connect directly with any of the Impact programmers and get more information on concerts, crusades, church services, and more. If you are ever in need, we are there for you. We have a 24-7 prayer team ready to agree for any need. Also, access our blog site. In it, you'll find inspirational words and teaching from some of the most anointed voices today. Supporting your Impact Network is easier than ever. Just access the Donate button, and you're only a few clicks away from changing someone's life forever. Thank you for your prayers and financial support. We are the Impact Network. Impact, where urban family, faith, lifestyle, entertainment, culture, collide, all here on Impact. I would have come, I would have spoke to that had I heard it, but praise <laughs> be to Jesus, the great God Jehovah has kept that from me. The fact, the fact of the matter is, however, that our, our white brothers and sisters, especially, you know, those who have led in the integrity of the word and that, they're sticklers for everything in the word, but when it comes to race, they, in, they keep the historical lives. Here's the reality, that race is a white invention. It is, it, it is a, a, a product of the white, predominantly European, imperialistic and colonial system of subjugation. Here's the fact. You cannot write in your Declaration of Independence that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You cannot write that and then enslave another human being unless you first reduce them to being something other than human. The language has to change. You control the language, you control the culture. You shift language, you shift culture. And so I believe we have to begin to use our nomenclature. Uh, and and, and you know, I'm telling white brothers and sisters all over, uh, uh, you know, I, don't, I will not engage in a conversation about race with you because there's one race. I will talk about ethnic diversity and I will talk about the need for us to come together and cross ethnic lines 
and have a conversation in that way. But see, as long as you are talking about race, you are missing the boat completely. And, 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 and this is why I think a lot of this is futile. There are some people, Teresa, that quite frankly <laughs> will never come around to the knowledge of the truth. And they think they have it. Here's one of the things that I pointed out. Until Acts chapter 10, see, here, here's the presumption. We think that Christianity immediately removes prejudice from the heart. We think that Christianity immediately removes bigotry and traditional uh, prejudice from the heart. It does not. What will you be able to do, uh, Bishop, to help that divide come together? Well, one of the things that we're doing right now is we are in, we are in plans of, of some dialogues with some leaders. Uh, and again, in this pandemic, it's difficult, but I want to do a couple of things live. And we're gathering some, we're, uh, we're talking about some dialogues and it's going to be on under a certain name, but I'm going to be actually hosting it. And we've got a number of leaders that are coming together to actually begin to discuss this from a biblical point of view. What, we don't need, uh, just like the people don't understand white privilege, uh, we also don't need white guilt. But what we need is truth. And, and we don't need, uh, you know, African-American people coming, uh, you know, yelling at white people as if they owe us something. You understand what I'm saying? There, there's got to be I, you know, don't get me wrong either. If reparations happen, I want the government to know my address. You feel me? But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is this: we've got to appeal higher than that. Quite frankly, the United States government doesn't have enough money to pay me what I'm owed. You right. understand? We, we got to go higher than that. And so, I believe we've got to engage in dialogue. I do not believe, Teresa, we can preach ourselves through this. I don't believe we can teach ourselves out of this. Okay. Uh, I believe there will have to be moments like in Acts chapter 10. What causes Peter to go beyond his ethnic, traditional, religious in, in, uh, indoctrination yes. and bigotry? It is a revelation from God. He sees a vision. Okay. And the vision is confirmed by brothers who come and reach out to him. That's what's going to have to happen. We're not going to be able to preach ourselves out of this. Well, I look forward to hearing more about what is going to be done and hopefully being a part of it because we definitely are in that season where we know change has to come. So Absolutely. Thank, you. thank you so much, Bishop. Thank you for having me. And also, there is, I would encourage people to go and follow us on Instagram, YouTube, there are messages here. There is a book that I'm working on uh, that is coming out and some materials that will help because we're gonna have to minister this in every strata of society. And I think the church now has to take a lead role, but we have to dismantle the historical lie and start talking on the basis of the truth. Thank you for joining me. I certainly appreciate the privilege of your time, and I look forward to seeing you right here next week. Same time, same place for more Higher Impact. Please connect with me on social media at Dr. T. Harrison or on my website, TeresaHarrison.com. And now as we leave you, please be blessed by the sound of the trailblazer and pioneer himself, Bishop Paul S. Morton. Happy 70th birthday, Bishop Morton. And yes, we still need the rain.
but I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. Anybody feel the rain? Anybody in this place? Somebody to tell them it's raining. 